I'm Caroline Bradley. Welcome to the Marriage Challenge podcast, brought to you each month by Care for the Family. It's great to have you with us. And I'm delighted today to be joined by Johnny and Alison Campbell-Smith, who are going to share their experiences of marriage when one of them had to travel and work away from home on a weekly basis and how they tackled that challenge together. But before we get into all of that, let me introduce them. Johnny and Alison have been married for over 19 years. Johnny previously worked as an IT consultant working in the UK, but is now a pastor. And Alison is the head of podiatry for a local health trust. They've got two boys and live in Belfast. Johnny and Alison, welcome. It is great to have you with us. Hi there. Hi, Caroline. Now, we always love to get to know our couples at the beginning and find out how you met and fell in love and how you ended up married. Okay. Well, this was not love at first sight. It was a very slow burn. We had friends in common. Johnny was part of the crowd. And just over time, I suddenly realised he's always there. He would be in the backseat of my car. He'd be over my shoulder. And then... And I was just joking about, but eventually... uh, I just felt that grounding that you brought to me uh, and it just nice. felt right. And uh, it was very quick. We uh, in, engaged three months later and married the year later. So wow. You and the rest, history, history, 19 years on. Wonderful. So we're going to have a look at today's topic. Um, what it's like when a partner has to travel and work away from the other perhaps for long periods or on a regular basis. And I know that's something that you've experienced in your own marriage. So tell us a wee bit about your situation. Yeah, so the first year of marriage was just getting to know each other even better. We were working to get uh, sort of close to each other. Uh, But then after that year, I ended up taking on a job uh, in the mainland UK, flying away every week, Monday to Friday. And it was a real shock to the system. On one hand, it seemed very successful, new new company, uh, company car, all of the things that you think are are the right things to have, uh, bringing in more money into the house. But on another hand, it was bringing real pressure and then coming home at the weekends there was this still the commitments to do a lot of things that I was involved in myself uh, and it just didn't seem normal yeah I mean we'd been so together we had shared interests everything was very much the two of us and it was so exciting for Johnny getting a job um, and then he was away I was a I was employed myself I had a really busy job so there was the kind of Monday to Friday routine that we got was we were busy nights were quiet maybe lonely um, and it was still a steep learning curve that we'd never yeah. really planned for yeah yep. so that obviously had a real effect on your relationship so help us understand what sort of pressures did that put you under as a couple well certainly I remember really clearly the first week Johnny left to head over to England being really sad just mm. lonely. I remember going into work and sitting in a room and just crying because he wasn't about. Um, and and that also maybe was a challenge with life stuff. Mm. Things would happen. My mum was sick. Johnny wasn't there, sitting in a hospital alone. And he was the only person I wanted to have with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that all changed as well when kids came along. Yeah. Because when you're doing stuff on your own, that's one thing. But then when you have another person to have a schedule with especially at the baby stage where you kind of need two Mm -hmm. pairs of hands and so those were difficult times in one sense um but we we had to kind of work through them yeah Yeah. and i think for for me there was a sort of sense of coming home after a busy week of not just working hard but also playing hard Mm -hmm. out every night uh restaurants all that walking in through the door quite exhausted and then moving into a different routine that I had to get used Mm -hmm. to but then the pressures of uh, uh, um, my mum was elderly and being able to get to see her in the weekend so we had all of the things that we needed to do in the weekend we just sort of we had to pack Mm into such a short period and one of the things that sense of I had no sense of what Johnny's world looked like I hadn't he lived in Mm -hmm. houses he lived in hotels I didn't know and at one stage the company even had a cleaner who would have ironed the shirts 
And I remember getting really <laughs> upset, really upset that the cleaner was ironing his shirts. Yeah. I was his wife. I should have ironed your shirts. Yeah. I should have learned very early <laughs> that, was that, a that good that thing. was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, so those are real pressures and obviously caused some strain. But I'm sure you did learn from that time. And there was steps that you obviously put in place that made your relationship remain strong. So tell us a wee bit about what that was. Well, I think I, I could see on a week by week basis being on play and seeing people on the planes uh, and there was a sense of normality with a you know a lot of people are doing this and they're doing mm. it today um, and and yet we needed to be intentional about stopping stopping that stopping the bus from moving in that direction and so we made a decision that we had to do something different um, so Alison first of all I felt that it was really important that she needed to visualize uh, where mm. I was. And so it meant bringing her in, actually getting her to meet some of my work colleagues, going into my offices that I was in and getting mm. used to that. Um, the, the other thing for me was having that sense of routine in the day uh, where in the morning, first thing as I woke up, I phoned Alison. Then at lunchtime and then dinner time. And before we would you know, go to bed. The last the last conversation that we would have before putting the head down on mm. the bed would be good night, have a good night's sleep. Mm. So it was almost a, even though we we're hundreds of miles apart, creating that normality. Yeah. Uh, in became, some sort it of became way. the routine and the the communication piece was so important. Mm -hmm. Knowing about each other's work pressures, knowing about each other's um daily ups and downs yeah. uh, was had to be talked through mm -hmm. because you just weren't there in the middle of it all the time mm -hmm. so you had to actually verbalize things and that was really important and, and as a man one of the things that I want to do is I want to always fix the problems so whenever Alison was telling me things that were going on at home I was immediately trying to get into a mode of oh well I, I this is how you would work it out where in fact all that Alison needed was for us just to chat and and to know mm -hmm. uh, that we understood each other. One of the other things that was really uh, helpful in that period was to share our diaries. So is that we both actually, in the electronic age now allows you to do much more with that. No. But to be Back able, in the day we had we, a great we big had desk a diary. a big diary in which yeah. to know what each other was doing, mm. even if we were apart that each of us knew, mm. well, Alison's in this meeting or I was somewhere or I was in London one day or I was in Sheffield mm. the next day. And it just gave that sense of knowing where, where each other and had. But we had to work hard yeah. at that. And that also allowed us then to, if we were scheduling family time or you know, weekends, if you had gigs and things, it yeah. allowed us to prioritise and be a wee bit selfish around the things that we needed to do mm. together. Yes. The time we needed to spend with friends and family and then later when kids came along, what we also need to do with the kids. So that prioritising our and, time and I think I think it's important, important to say there that it's, it's not a bad thing to be selfish and for each yeah. of us to be selfish. So, you know, Alison would have, whenever I would come home, I would immediately wanted to cut the grass or something like that. But actually... It was right for actually some weekends to say, it doesn't matter about the grass. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the grass can yeah. go, but our marriage needs to the, stay. There was intact. a real rhythm of being, a. you got into the rhythm of being away through the week and then the weekend. And there was a wee glitch as the week and the weekend collided. And yeah. there was generally something that would have upset the anticipation of coming home. But then Johnny would have went out to cut the grass, would have washed the dishes, would have tidied the kitchen. The things that would normally be fantastic at into our time so yeah. we had to get used to kind of going okay the grass doesn't need cut if he wants to tidy the kitchen let him tidy the kitchen and get into that rhythm yes. and maximize and enjoy the time that we were together at, yep. at home as yep. opposed to so those were really great things that you did the the, the key of communication yep. the prioritizing the being intentional and yep. working out what were the important things mm. that you wanted to do together yep. so obviously um those things have enriched your marriage you've learned mm. in that situation but you're now in a different circumstances where you're actually working closer to home so how, how have you found that working away has helped you as you've come back working at home and being together again well Many folk have said over the years, sure, it's a great secret to a happy marriage being apart. But actually, <laughs> sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not. We just find that the skills and the, the strategies that we learnt through the years Johnny worked away mm. actually have enriched and been a really mm. good foundation for mm. our 
current situation. Uh, Johnny came home from England, his IT job was over and he went back to university to study. So he was actually away from home for a further three years. Okay. Uh, at that stage with two small children. Uh, but we'd learnt, we'd, we'd done so much over the previous 10 years, we had the skills to keep going. And then it was another readjustment when Johnny came home and is doing what he's doing now. Mm. Um, and there is, there's no doubt, I was used to being on my own Monday to Friday, very self-sufficient, mm -hmm. very independent. But we just had to rework that as well and back to communication. Yeah, and, and, and I would say that, that, that one of the wonderful things about us being apart is that we actually now know each other far better mm. than we ever uh, have done because we put in place the mechanisms to have open communication. It wasn't just about, you know, uh, is the house tidy? Is everything okay? You know, it was actually talking to each other about how we were feeling. Mm. So now that has become very much a natural part. Now that we're together, we haven't lost that. Yeah. Just because we're together, it doesn't mean that, that mm -hmm. all of those things that we've learned are for a time of the past. They, they continue in and they continue to enrich our marriage. Those are really excellent mm -hmm. skills to have for any marriage, any relationship, and certainly seems to be enriching yours now. Um, so what would be really interesting is to know if you were speaking to a couple who were just about to make a decision to go into that kind of a working arrangement or were just beginning to get used to having to work away and face that, what sort of advice or help would you give them? Um, Alison, from your perspective as someone about to experience that and be left as the person at home yeah I think don't see it as a negative mm. think of the opportunities think of the opportunities it gives you to travel to do things differently and it really for us it did enrich us because we did have the opportunity to communicate differently and just to maximize the time and value the time that we did have together mm -hmm. and I know you kind of put spins on it about you were away. Yeah, I was, less I, time I, than I you was apart. It, it got to a stage where I was able to get into a routine where I could be home in my bed more nights mm. than I was away. That's um, really helpful to think of it from yeah, that positive it's way. Really positive. Um, uh, the other thing I would say about the whole open communication is that whenever you are completely open in your communication with each other, it breaks down any issues that m that might come off. Um, suspicion um, or doubts or negative thoughts what it does instead is it builds the element of trust mm. uh, and and so even though you are a part you you get to a point of trusting the other person because you know that they are telling you from their yeah. heart what's going on that's great those are really good foundations for a couple if they find themselves on that journey um, mm -hmm. and we would love in every episode uh, that our guest couple can set a little challenge for all the couples who are listening in today and um, that would help them enrich their marriage and their relationship uh, today. Well Carla I, I think from our chat uh, today the big thing is about how do we communicate more effectively mm. and for us having times throughout the day uh, where we can chat that I suppose avoids that sense of routine is really important. So the challenge would be to commit uh, over the next couple of weeks to intentionally carve out a slot in your day to chat, maybe over a cup of tea uh, or uh, over a Skype call. You will know what works best for your situation and you can use that time to chat about anything at all but it's not a time to chat about the daily schedule or the kids' homeworks or what about the ironing pile. Use that time to talk to each other about how you are, how you're feeling and what's going on in your lives at that moment in time and how to encourage each other. And I believe that once you start getting into a routine, then you will not want to miss the opportunity mm. anymore. That's a great challenge. Wonderful. And we hope that you will all have a go at that challenge and try that at home this month. Johnny and Alison, thank you so much for those really helpful insights. Before we finish, just a little reminder that you can sign up on the Care for the Family website to receive more news and updates from this podcast. When you do, you automatically receive a 20% discount off your next purchase from the Care for the Family shop. So do check that out. So that's all for this episode. And it just leaves me to say again, Johnny and Alison, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to tackling another marriage challenge next time. Goodbye.
You have been listening to the Marriage Challenge podcast. For further information about our courses, resources and events, visit us at www.carefortheFamily.org.uk.